Extreme Collectibles here, extremely upset. Uh, not upset, frustrated. So I just recorded three reviews to realize my microphone was broken. So when I started editing them, I heard <laughs> So I'm doing this without a mic, so it may sound a little funny. Try and pick one up later. But before we start, I want to say, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. But more importantly, hit that little bell so you get a notification every time that I post a review or a video. I want to give a special shout out to uh, my uh, two loyal guys who give me a thumbs down before, uh, uh, within 20 seconds that a video started. Little do they know, thumbs down helped me just as much as thumbs up. And little do they know that I feel very powerful having control over their lives, that they drop whatever they're doing to uh, go to my YouTube channel whenever I post something. So this is going to be an interesting review because I've already reviewed half of it. Not his bottom half, not his top half, but this is part of a diorama. This is a custom diorama by ARP called Clash of Powers. And I've already reviewed the Logan piece of it. So go check that out if you want to see that. That is in my Wolverine episodes. And for now, let's you and I check this out. here with half of the ARP Clash of Powers quarter scale Hulk vs. Logan diorama. Whew. That's a lot to say. So if you fast forwarded through the intro, go back and watch that again because I ain't repeating it. This is a custom piece that I've had for a while and he's part of a diorama which I have already reviewed the Logan aspect of it. So on a side note, when we talk about paint and sculpt specifically with the base, I'm going to very briefly go over it because we've already gone over it in detail in the other review. So if you really want to see it, go to the other review. But uh, very easy to put together, this half of it. The base was one piece, feet are another, torso is another. So one, two, three. With that, uh, did have a little bit of battle damage. The first is his left hand had a few fingers broken. You can actually still see a little bit of a repair here, which is unfortunate. And then he had a scuff on his ass on the back of his pants. Too bad, paint chip, that white splotch there, which we'll talk about in a second, but the pants are absolutely phenomenal, which is kind of why it upsets me. So uh, 1800 was the cost for this massive diorama. I uh, purchased it because Marvel and or Hulk and Wolverine are my are two of my top uh, Marvel people, and I have a huge Hulk display, I have a huge Wolverine display. It just makes sense. I think I'm gonna have four or five total Hulk versus Wolverine or Old Man Logan or whatever it is dioramas from Phase Four to the Sideshow. Um, I did a repaint on the Sideshow one. Uh, well, I didn't do the repaint, but there's a review on that too. So go check that out if you like Hulk and Wolverine. Talking really fast. Not sure why. Um, I'm not going to measure him uh, because the tape measure is not here and I don't have any pants on. Um, true story. Most of these reviews, I do not have pants because it's my own home and I don't like to wear pants. Maybe we'll get to a society someday where we don't have to do any pants. I do have something under my pants. Uh, undergarments. Uh, underwear. Boxers. Briefs. That kind of thing. If you wanted to know. But jumping into the concept and design of this. So this is really cool. Epic battle between Hulk and Wolverine. He is on a mountaintop, which is good because they're away from civilians, and they're in the middle of an epic battle. How do we know it's in the middle? Well, a few different things. Number one is his uh, uh, fighting position. First of all, it looks like he just tried to grab Wolverine with his left hand, or he's about to. His right hand, he's ready to throw a blow, and he has that sneer on his face. So you can definitely tell that... Um, He's, he's uh, pissed off, he's mad, he's enraged, but he's focused on the fight. And then probably the biggest thing we can tell is he has a lot of battle damage that we're going to look close at. They're open wounds with blood flowing out. And Hulk and Wolverine heal almost, almost instantaneously. So you know this is in the midst of it. It didn't happen, you know, 30 minutes ago. And they're all Wolverine claw gashes. Man, that'd be so cool to have Wolverine claws. One really cool thing about the design, as you can obviously see, is even though it's a diorama, you can separate it, and they both can be displayed very well separately. So I have him with my uh, 
Avengers collection. He scales really well with XM Hulkbuster, and then Logan is with the uh, Wolverines. However, I will eventually put them together when I get more uh, Maji cases set up. So, um, very cool concept, very cool design, and where this statue really knocks it out of the park is the paint sculpt, just like the Logan. It's, it's phenomenally done, it's one of the best, and done by uh, the ARP team. And again, reminder, the base I'm only briefly going to talk about, so let's do it now and get it done with. The rock, the mountain knee rock, the, I love the colors on it, I love the texture, I love the design. Looks so cool, looks very realistic, but what really blows this piece out of the water is the snow and the moss. Both look extremely wheel. Re wheel. Both look extremely real, and the snow reminds me a lot of Prime One's Mr. Freeze that I reviewed. It reminds the moss looks like real moss growing on it. It's it's just great, and uh, it could be it could be real moss. Maybe it is mold growing on it. Who knows? So, but then we get to this incredible Hulk. See that? See what I did there? Never mind. And uh, he first his, his body, uh, his, his skin. I want to talk about his skin color, the paint on his skin, because it's kind of the same throughout. And then we'll go from down to uh, from up to down, uh, just like she likes it. So right in here, he has a bunch of different colors, not just the green, but yellow and orange, and the variations are all over his body. And there's these striations too that you see in these different pictures of almost like. Uh, where his skin was stretched out because he grew uh, from Bruce Banner. And it's a very different color take on the Hulk, but I like it a lot. Really well done. And then starting back at his feet here, uh, his feet look phenomenal. Uh, they are fat feet. His toes look a little small, but I've never studied Hulk's feet that much. I love the bones, the ankle bones popping out. I love the uh, phalanges, I think that's what they're called in his toes, and the nails look great. Uh, they could be a little longer because I doubt uh, uh, he trims his toenails. However, Bruce Banner probably does, and it's probably a representation of Bruce Banner, so that would actually make sense. We should have a big conversation topic on Hulk's toenails. Uh, Diving right back into uh, moving up, he has his calves. His calves are outrageously big, roid on roid, uh, muscle on muscle. But one really cool part here are the battle uh, damages. And it's on both legs and it's on his arms and his chest. Um, the grooves are actually sculpted in there, so there is depth to them. And then the blood has that glistening water effect, the green blood. It actually looks real. It's dripping in the right direction. And at the, it's just... It's done really well. It's one of my favorite parts. And then his pants is my favorite part. These pants just look absolutely phenomenal. I apologize, you hear people probably stomping around up there, uh, but to his pants. So first of all, there's this texture on it that just looks really good. I love that they use the traditional Hulk purple color. And then the rips and the tears, not only from where Wolverine has slashed him, but from where his transformation has occurred. Uh, there's even some threading holding some areas together. The folds and the seams are just done so well. This is just such a good sculpt. So much detail into his pants and then execution on it. And then his pockets look phenomenal. He has great looking pockets. Then his shirt on top uh, that's around his belt, or not his belt, but his waist that has ripped off. You can kind of see that. And it's not your traditional white that a lot of people have, but it's kind of a grayish color. Then his torso. Great job on the anatomy here. It's not overdone like so many people do on Hulks, which Hulk can look very good overdone too. But it's more uh, humanoid, more realistic. And there's just some really good detail uh, on his uh, musculature. And it follows on his back. Again, I like how that they're back. Hard. I think that's the right deltoids, both of uh, uh, trapezoids, whatever. He's, he's arched back, showing off his chest. But uh, his biceps and forearms look phenomenal. My, and there's veins running all over, if you haven't seen that yet. My one criticism is he doesn't really have wrists. His wrists don't get skinnier, maybe, uh, and his fingers look a little uh, short. However, speaking of his fingers and his hands, look how uh, uh, 
big they are and there's great texture and on the inside it almost looks like there's some padding like he works with his hands you know someone you meet in the construction trade or just dry as hell as it is in, in where I live but really really well done and then moving on to his portrait is kind of unique before we jump into it from my understanding someone correct me if I'm wrong there's two different parts of the portrait one side they wanted to do more of a traditional Lou Ferrigno uh, then the other side is MCU uh, Mark Ruffalo. And when you look at just the sides like I am now, and we're going to look at some pictures in a second, it's, it's spot on. It's amazing how that's done. And where they mix together, I first wasn't a fan, uh, but now that I have it in person, it is so good. It's really good. And he's making kind of a weird expression, but that makes sense because in the middle of a fight, someone took a photo of you, you're not just going to be perfectly tempered. You're you're going to have to be doing weird stuff with your eyes and your mouth, especially if you're yelling or screaming. But looking at his hair first, fabulous job on his hair. So much good sculpt in here, and it really reminds me of, you know, maybe Bruce Banner would have had his hair combed and, well, prim and proper. But see all the detail in that? I like the uh, black matting they used on that. Then looking at the side portrait, here is the, the Lou Ferrigno-ish side. As you can see, it looks really good. Uh, maintained his uh, traditional eyebrows and it's the same black matte color and then the other side is more the uh, MCU Mark Ruffalo type Hulk you can see the difference in those looks really good some good sculpt around his ear and then looking at his face that's where the funny expression is because it's almost two faces in one but it's still your traditional Hulk and they did a fabulous job on the sculpt with his uh, forehead and the lines in there showing how, how enraged he is. His nose looks good and then his lips being pulled back at the top sneering and the bottom one uh, pushing out with just a different color in there um, on the bottom of his lip and his teeth look so good. I love the glistening effect. I love the gums. Really good job on the sculpt of his mouth. So those are my thoughts on this piece. Let me know what your favorite Green Hulk is. Uh, existing or on order. I have five Green Hulks on order, so I don't know how long this will stay the champion, but it, for me it's the champion of what I own. And if you've ever had a chance to look at this piece or pick it up, absolutely do it. You know, two great characters in an epic battle, and it's just, it's done so well. I, I can't say how much I appreciate uh, some of the aspects of this piece. So. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please hit a like. Please let me know uh, your favorite Green Hulk, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.